record that video. Okay, and we're gonna do this a lot cleaner. All right, so let me just go all the way back here. Okay, back to the beginning of this one, guys. We're approaching design now, and so I, I talked to you about creating those primary axes. I said that I want my vertical axis to be the primary axis, okay? So now as I narrate every move that I make, since it's a primary axis, I'm gonna pick the most bold line. That's this one. I'm gonna pick one of my most bold and saturated and accentuating colors. That's either blue or purple. Um, so I'll copy and paste this line. I'm gonna move it over and make sure that it snaps to the spot that you want it. Back into my layers. Right now, this is still on my generic lines layer. I now want to create actual composition layers. So I'm going to create a layer that's called primary axes. All right, and then moving on um, from that, I need to actually move this onto that layer. So I'll right click it and say arrange, send a current layer. Are you guys able to keep up with me on that so far, or do you need? I, I Scott, how you doing? All right, let me come around and, and get you guys sort of um, rallied up with this. I know it's a totally brand new software for some of you, but um, we've got to um, do some of the fundamentals at the same time we're also trying to be productive. Okay, moving on, guys. Um, with all of that confusion and Ahmad, or Ahmed, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, Ahmed realized that, uh, you know, the, the line is going to keep switching on us the way that, that you know, when we, we basically use the color picker, it's going to keep switching on us. Um, we want to create color palettes um, using the swatches feature, right? That way we could just change the fill or stroke with the same color and not have to worry about the picker. So let's do that real fast. Um, and all of you should pay strict attention to this unless you already know how to do it. Um, but basically you just take the eyedropper tool, you click on the color that you want, and it should show up up here once you click it. Okay, from that menu, go all the way down here to the new swatch button and then call it whatever you want to call it. So zero one, yellow or goldenrod or whatever, you know, however descriptive you want to be, go for it. Then hit okay. And it'll show up here now. That says zero one yellow. Then you just run down and you do the rest of them. Pick that one, new swatch, zero two tan. Pick this one. New swatch, zero three, slate blue. New swatch, zero five, blue. Okay, so that's that's really it on on the actual. Um, color swatches, right? Now we have them just there for us to pick from throughout the duration of this entire composition, okay? So what are we doing with that, right? Now it's easy for us to just select the line and then go up to the top on our line color side and then you can just switch it to whatever you wanna be. So I mentioned to you before on the video that we threw away is that I'm picking blue because in my image composition, blue is the primary color. It is the absolute primary color for the entire composition. So that's why I'm picking that one there. Um, and then I'm going to create my secondary, or the first of my secondaries. Um, well, actually, this is going to be another primary. Probably be another primary. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so I'll create probably another. I'll just leave it on primary axes. Um, but I'm gonna make this one actually a little bit thinner, right, just slightly. So I'll copy and paste this one. 
And this particular line, I actually want it to be horizontal, so I just need to rotate it, right? So the, the rotation tool shows up when you mouse over one of the corners like that. It'll allow you to get a little rotator. So you click that and then hold shift and it'll rotate down. And then just make sure you position it so that it snaps to the edge of this the edge of the page. Like that. Alright, so so far. Oh wait, I need to change the color. So my other primary axis is going to be purple because it's also very saturated so I'll switch that to purple um, put that on and make sure it's on the primary axis color you know basically um, at this point we're gonna start to have things that are slightly different okay I don't expect you to follow along with me exactly from here on out so what I'm trying to communicate up to this point is have a, a controlled degree of accuracy in, in, in organization and where you're placing things in the file, how you're naming them, um, and, and what kind of system you're starting to develop, okay? Um, what questions do you have so far? All right, so here's the first deviation from the rules, right? So far, I have my library, and I have some geometry that I put in, right? But it's not quite doing what I need it to do, right? It feels weak when I accentuate that corner doing what I did because I have a full bleed off to the right and a full bleed off to the top, and then it just kind of overlaps a little bit and then eh, stops, right? It feels weak. It's not a strong way of, of accentuating that corner. So my first um, deviation from the rules is that I'm going to elongate these lines. <coughs> to be full bleed. I know. Breaking the law. Huh? That's true. Actually, that's not true. That's opposite. Oh, yeah, because it won't be a trust itself. Yeah. And then politics and all that stuff. That's exactly the opposite of the advice you gave me. Once you make the rules for yourself, you don't want to break them. Well, well, that's not always true. So basically, um, my, my stance on that is that design really is nothing but a system of rules, right? But that's only the first level of design. The second level of design is knowing when the rules need to be broken or when you need to deviate from that rule set and that's where that's where real clever design really comes into play because nothing is going to be purely generative and totally independent of the designer itself okay um here we go uh yeah actually it's probably about time that i stop this video and i move into a different one but um make sure that you guys get to a point where you've established you know your focal point and then we'll continue